Today, I'll explain what is the Cavalieri's principle. To do so, I'm having a drink, it's actually pop soda, in a stylish cafe in Lisbon. And this is Matt. Olá. Sou Rogério. Hi, welcome. In this pleasant evening, I have a question for you regarding these three glasses. The first one is a cone, usually serving tropical cocktails. The second one is half a sphere, usually called a brandy glass or a snifter. And the third one is a cylinder that usually presents pop soda, aged 12 years. Assuming that all these three glasses are the same height and edge diameter, what would be the connection between the volumes of all three? Bear this question in mind. I'll answer it at the end of the show. Waiter, I'll have a moonshine, a cognac and a strawberry daiquiri, please. You meant three pop sodas? Well, I didn't, but okay. Meanwhile, let's proceed with a simpler problem. What is the connection between the volume of these two solids? They both have equal bases in height. The first one is a straight parallel pie pad, and the other one is an oblique parallel pie pad. So, are they volumes the same? Let's see. These solids match two stacks of Eurovision Song Contest CDs. In this stack, CDs are all straightened, therefore it is a right parallel pipe. Here, we have the same number of Eurovision CDs, but they are offset, hence shaping an oblique parallel pipe. Since the volume of each CD is the same, it's reasonable to think that these two parallel pipes have, in fact, the same volume. If we intersect these solids with a plane parallel to this table, the section formed in each solid has the same area. Therefore, both solids have the same volume. And this is Cavalieri's principle. Eurovision, eh? OK, new example. Fortunately, the principle works with any type of section. Watch this cylinder shaped by those same CDs. Even if you skew it, the stack maintains volume. This is also Cavalieri's principle. This bears no relation to former Italian Prime Minister Silvio, but to Buonaventura Cavalieri, a 17th century Italian mathematician that, as far as we know, didn't throw bunga bunga parties. In the end, what does Cavalieri's principle have to do with these three glasses? If we pour two conic glasses into the spheric... Oh, accident, accident, mathematical flood alert! OK, in order to control the size of the glasses, let's get graphics help for this one. That's more like it. All glasses are now the same height and edge diameter. Therefore, two conical glasses fill up to the brim of the spherical one, thus concluding that the spherical is twice the volume of the cone. If we pour the spherical glass into the cylindrical, and add one conical, we get a full cylinder. Thus, the cylindrical glass is triple the volume of the conical one. And this is a consequence of the Cavalieri's principle. For this to work, I have to turn the conical glass upside down. Down we go. Cheers. In fact, if all three glasses get intersected by a plane parallel to its bases, the sum of both conical and spherical sectional areas equals the sectional area of the cylindrical one. This is not a straightforward fact, but we can get to it with a few simple calculations. With Cavalieri's principle, it's clear that summing the volumes of both spherical and conical glasses equals the cylindrical volume. Since the cone is one-third the volume of the cylinder with same height and circumference, it's also clear that the hemisphere is two-thirds the volume of the cylinder. In theory, for all three of us to drink the same, for every sniff that this girl takes, I would have to drink two of these. And to follow up to the blonde one, who's drinking from a cylindrical glass, 
I don't have to drink three of these. And I'm already behind. And this is math.